Welcome to the DraftKings Blitz. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J. Clay. I'm Jason Gilbo at J. Gilbo 11. Taking a look at your article here, you're talking DraftKings defenses, of course, uh, looking at cash game and GPP options. Um, o- overall, I mean, how do you feel about defenses this week? I mean, pretty good amount. Uh, well, if we want to jump into cash games here, I mean, I, I think there's two clear options, um, at least with price considered. I'm looking at the Seahawks and Chiefs. I, I mean, they're just facing bad offenses. They're good defenses. Um, implied totals are good. I mean, I, I just think everything's pointing their way. Uh, in terms of the, the Seahawks, without Devontae Parker, I just don't see how they're going to get the ball down the field. I mean, I like Kenny Stills and all, but... I more think he was more of a product of of the Drew Brees offense than really, you know, what his numbers indicated those first few years, and he hasn't really done, you know, much sense. So I, I'm okay with him, but in terms of the Seahawks secondary, I'm really worried how Tannehill is going to move the ball. Um, I think, I mean, he's kind of been prone to interceptions as well, so I think we can look at that sort of sort of situation there. The running game is going to be bad. Um, I mean, I, I get Arian Foster is the new free agent signing, and he's got the name power, but he just wasn't that effective the, la- the last time we saw him. So I, I just don't know how he's going to look coming off a major injury. Um, they obviously have Jay Ajayi back there as well. I don't trust that. I just think this is a great matchup for Seattle, everything pointing their direction, and, and it's not killing you, especially with the values um, for, for week one. I think you can really look at, sort of them as a high upside team yeah i definitely agree and as you said i mean both team totals here under 20 um both going to be trailing you got to expect them to kind of be trying to chase the game uh obviously i mean both those offenses that they are playing coming into really tough places to play too yeah and in terms of san diego um philip rivers hasn't thrown a touchdown in the last two you know games against the chiefs we've seen the running game just be completely stifled each of the last two games last year um melvin gordon just couldn't get it going um as as far as denny woodhead we know what he is he's that third down monster but that really only is relevant when they're losing and sort of chasing points so San Diego is known for, you know, putting it on in, in um, you know, when they're down by 20-plus. But I, I just see this Chiefs offense dominating them. The the offensive line hasn't really improved. They didn't really bring anything in to improve them in the offseason. So I expect pressure to be consistent on um, Phillip Rivers as, as the game goes on. I, I just think this is going to be uh, another rough game for the Chargers. Yeah, I'm certainly in agreement. I mean, both these guys rank highly for me in terms of cash game defenses. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of t- uh, tournaments here, I mean, you, you got some some options here that that certainly kind of caught my eye. Um, uh, and talk about the Packers here. I mean, pretty reasonable price here at 2800. I I went a little more contrarian than probably most feel comfortable with, but I just look at I look at the Packers. I look at their secondary, and then I look at Blake Bortles, and I just think. The Jaguars are going to be down in this game, at least based on what the projected totals are, based on what I think Aaron Rodgers and a healthy Packers receiving core looks like. I I just think this is going to be um, a Packers statement game almost saying, hey, we're back. We can score 35, 40 points again. Um, And I just think the Jaguars' defense is year away. So I I think Jags' offense is going to be trailing, going to be in that comeback mode. I could see a pick six as a really high probability. And, I mean, once you get that pick six, defense is basically worth it. So they can give up 20 points as long as they get that pick six. I see them getting a little pressure too. So um, there will be some points. I, I see Allen Robinson catching a few deep passes, but I just think there's a really high high chance of, you know, a big turnover. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, and being 1100 cheaper than the Seahawks, I mean, you, you are saving some cash, and obviously you talked about the values that are there this week. But, you know, 1100 that's another tier wide receiver you can toss into your lineup or, or upgrade your tight end or something like that. So um, I like the Packers. I think that's a nice call even on the road against Jacksonville. I, I think there is a lot of upside for that defense. Um, as far as Houston goes, I mean, a, a pretty reasonable price tag here too. I mean, thirty two hundred. Did they kind of go borderline, kind of borderline cash, borderline GPP, or, or is it strictly GPP? 
I like the Texans a lot this week. I think they're borderline cash. I just don't like them as much as, you know, the Seahawks and Chiefs. But I just think in general, J.J. Watt's back. It would have been a little more of a concern if he wasn't playing. I just look at the Chicago offense. Um, it's gonna be gonna be a rough season, I think. Um, I like Kevin White quite a bit for the future. Uh, preseason has me a little worried. I think he'll he'll sort of figure it out as the season goes on. But you certainly have to be worried about a guy who's never actually played a, a regular season snap before. Um, certainly has upside, but I think it might be limited here. Um, love Alshon, but I just worry about. Texans getting pressure, Jay Cutler making mistakes. Um, this this Bears line, they they did add Josh Sitton this week, but we'll see. You know how many snaps he even plays if he does play at all. Uh, Jeremy Langford, I really don't have much confidence in at all, other than maybe you know catching some dump offs at the end of the game. I I just think this is going to be a rough day for Jay Cutler in terms of the pressure that the Texans can put on him. Yeah, I certainly agree. I mean, I'm looking at this this game and how it's it's expected to kind of play out. You expect Houston to be up and kind of have Chicago trailing for most of that game. Um, on the road, Jay Cutler, I mean, we've seen him be turnover prone, interception happy many times before. So I, I like this Houston defense quite a bit. And as you mentioned, I mean, J.J. Watt back. And that's certainly all you kind of need on that defensive line there. Again, I can't think of a better way to cap up week cap off week one than a Jay Cutler three interception game. So I could certainly see that in the cards here. It just brings back old times. Yeah. <laughs> and the last one I wouldn't suggest getting a lot of exposure to, but I think if you want to totally dumpster dive, I think the Browns against basically Carson Wentz is something I might look at in a contrarian way. Um team totals aren't looking good. You know, this game in general, not looking good for the Browns defense. Obviously, that secondary has issues, to say the least. But uh, Jordan Matthews is not 100%. Zach Ertz is fine. I like him. But overall, I mean, how much is Carson Wentz going to do? He didn't even know he was the starter until a week ago. I, I just think there's some potential here. Um, Hugh Jackson, I, I believe in him. I believe he's going to right the ship here. They certainly don't have all the pieces, but they do have – some nice young potential. Um, and again, all it takes is one or two big plays and, and you got yourself a value defense for 2,300. Do they totally shut them down? Probably not, but I think they could get a few sacks and maybe an interception here. And, and I think for 2,300, you're hitting value. Yeah, it's certainly great. I mean, I think this is, you and I have talked about this game. Obviously, I've talked about the Eagles defense on my pod. You're talking about the Browns here. This is one mm. of those ones where you and I are just, it could go numerous ways. I mean, I think the possibilities are really endless here. We could see both teams just completely falter. We could see both of them actually, you know, score some points. It's just kind of a wide range of options, which is why it's such a boomer bust play. And what if Carson Wentz is just terrible, you know? <laughs> He could just be terrible, and I don't think Ryan Matthews is a feature back to the point where he could carry an offense for an entire game. So um, if they start stacking the box, it's going to be big problems. Yeah, I definitely agree. So I think it's pretty interesting. And, and as you mentioned, I think that 2300 price, you're, you're getting down there, which is obviously you know the benefit is saving you some cash, um, and it is a nice contrarian move. Absolutely. That's going to wrap things up with the DraftKings Blitz. Be sure to check out the rest of our content at dailyfantasycafe.com.